your own risk. Have, have, have a nice day with Roxanne Shante featuring DJ Silk on Rock the Bell Radio. Okay. Well, as you know, I have a lot of brothers, both in and out of hip hop. And so one of the things that I do is I leave the door open. And of course, they always love to come and visit their sister. That's right. Please believe it. So I've had one of my great, I want to say, one of my Hollywood, hip hop Hollywood brothers. So we're going to go right here with it right now. Let's do it. Hollis to Hollywood, but is he good? Broke it down to the very last. Hollywood. What is he good? Okay, right now we have in the studio with us Sean Nelson. Yep, yep, yep. That's right, that's right. So in case you just listen, in case you can't recognize the voice, <laughs> you will definitely know who he is. I'm talking about Fresh himself from the movie Fresh. I'm talking about the wood, the corner, the year that trembled, the date, the gospel, their eyes were watching God, the orphan king, Miracle Boys Premium. Man, That's there's the a resume, lot. Listen, huh? listen, listen, there's so much, listen, there's so much shit on here. I could have started rhyming. <laughs> Just then I was seeing so many words. I was getting ready to start freestyling and shit. I was going to say, oh, listen to that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, hey, how are you? I'm not bad, you know, just trying to stay busy, grinding it out. Absolutely, absolutely. Constantly staying on my game, you know. Well, I'm going to tell you, up here at LL Cool J's Rock the Bells, we have what we call from mm. hip-hop to Hollywood, oh, okay. which means you get to cover a gambit of everything. Mm. And we've seen you do so much of that. Yeah. you know. And one of the things that I really wanted to ask you, and this is like my own personal question, is when you did the part Fresh, mm -hmm. was that difficult? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it was difficult. There, there was a part in the movie that I had, it took a little trying to get but it was the crying scene in the end it was like ah, I don't know if I can just cry on the spot you know mm -hmm. and uh, there's a story behind that actually um, when I was doing that scene uh, the first take I couldn't cry like really? it wasn't happening yeah I don't know I could. I just couldn't get to that place so Sam being the nice guy he is tried to help me out so he's like yeah I'll, I'll, I got you so we start action and uh, it, it's, he the Directors just like take your time, you know. If it comes, it comes when it comes. Okay. And Sam, he starts screaming, <laughs> and then he starts slapping me, <laughs> trying to make bring that emotion out. And and, I'm like, yeah, no, it didn't work. I was gonna ask you, I was like, yeah, I was gonna ask you, like, listen. I was like, yeah, I'm just getting tight, actually. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's, he's like, there ain't no tears coming. Yeah. We about to start rumbling in here. <laughs> but so you know, the one you after that, I just took my time with it and just really just kind of got to that place just breathing and and thinking i don't know exactly what i thought about you know what i mean now but it just happened and i was so like i did it really <laughs> yeah yeah it, it took a little while though like they had that camera running for a little minute but did you know I, let me tell you something yeah. i can cry on fucking spot i can't I can't. I can't. It depends like, on depends on what I'm doing. You know, this I did a play where I had to cry every mm -hmm. night and most nights I did it. <laughs> really? Yeah. See now they say when you can't cry is because life is so good. I I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. It's just it's just I think it's just really kinda getting to that place. I guess what kinda what you're saying too is like, yeah, if if you're having a great day, how are you just going to cry, yeah, like, right? Like look, like, look, I just saw this check. Yeah. Like, I it's just... hard to cry. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if I think about how much taxes they're going to take out this motherfucker, exactly. I'm still smiling. I'll still be good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll still All be right. good. Okay, so now you are from the Bronx. I am. Oh, I'm yes. Yeah, born and raised. Yeah. Co-op City. Yes, yeah, so it was hip-hop. Born uh, and raised. Uh, yeah. Well, they weren't in Co-op City, so you was like, <laughs> yeah, nah. you, was like you was like in a fancy part of the Bronx. Yeah, you y'all had buzzes <laughs> and could hear people's voices in the hallway. And the door worked. And the buzz, door, right? yeah, exactly. They just open right up. Yeah, they cleaned your grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you came from the fancy part of the bro. Uh, I mean, it's not really that fancy. It's not, <laughs> not like an upscale. Nah, I wouldn't even say it's a PJ. It's, you know, it's just something different. That's all. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, I'm just going to tell you, like, straight up coming straight out the group home, it was fancy for us. He was like, oh, <laughs> okay. that's cool. I'm saying, oh, that's fancy. That's what it is. It's like, I, yeah, I they buzzers that. work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, one of the things, too, that I would like to know about you is that, you know what? 
you have not changed. And, mm. you know, earlier we were talking about it because a lot of times I try not to have that conversation, yeah. you know, off air yeah, because exactly. we have such a great conversation. Indeed. But there was one of the things that you said about it that surprised me. You said it was both a blessing and a curse to yeah. still look so young. Like, you still look exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for people to be like, oh, you know, like, yeah, we take it as like, oh, yeah, that's great that you still look exactly the same. But you said that it was a blessing and a curse. Yeah, for, well, as an actor, I'm trying to play different roles. I'm playing, trying to play over older roles I'm, right. I'm not I don't want to be stuck as the kid the kid you know and now I'm just at a place where you know there have been roles that I've wanted and they're like well we still see you as the kid or you kind of look a little young even though I am that age <laughs> you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but it's like nah you don't look it though so they go with somebody that looks older okay. you know what I'm saying so that's the where the curse comes in for me you know I'm like okay it's, it's cool that I look young and all that but you know <laughs> I wanted that gig <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right okay what would be your ideal part what would you who would you if you could play any part what would it be play any part yes. or are we talking about like uh like uh playing somebody that actually lived or just any type of character any type of character like if well, you had I your choice do an action movie <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, I do. Like you want to jump really, out of cars? And... I want to jump out of planes. I want to kick somebody in the face or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I want to be that that one man army. <laughs> it doesn't have to be too crazy, but it also I really want to do like Marvel movies. That's that's my dream. I, I was a big comic book kid. You know what I'm saying? So uh, just seeing that it's blowing up right now, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I would okay. love to be in one of those. Okay, so just tell me which character. <laughs> so that's hard because there's not too many. You know what I'm saying? Not too many African American um, heroes in the in the Marvel universe. There, there's a few, and some of them are taken already. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, unless they switch it up, um, I don't know. Like, th- 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 as far as the, I could play Bishop. He's one of the X Men. But it, I was always saying, like, for from DC universe, there's mm-hmm. a character named Static. He's young though. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So okay. it's like, oh, if we want to reach back, I'll reach back for that one. Okay, absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you. See, I noticed that you went for, you know, the character that you felt was like, you know, African-American character, character. Yeah. Listen, I play Wonder fucking Woman. <laughs> yeah, that's what we yes, doing Yes, I would. I would that's be Wonder Woman. I'm telling you, All small right. bathing suit, them bracelets, ching, 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 And then I'll just wait for your character to come out. Well, but I, like, I, I like to keep it the way it was, you know, like on in the comics. But yeah, if y'all want to switch it up, I'll be Superman. They, See, see what I'm talking about? The sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. You got to make them think. I'll throw that red cape on. There you go. You might have to switch up the little spandex suit a little bit, but, you know, make it more modern. That would be dope. There you go. Put them in some basketball shorts. I like Green Lantern, too. (laughs) <laughs> whatever yeah, whatever see, work look look that's what I'm t- see that's, that's what you gotta do you gotta reach for that that's right y'all this is Roxanne Shantae and look at that Shantae Sean see that <laughs> please believe it baby we'll be right back let's do it have a nice day with Roxanne Shantae featuring DJ Silk on Rock, Rock the Bells Radio Okay, so if you're just now tuning in, of course, you know I am sitting here across from my Hollywood, you know, we say hip hop to Hollywood, so I'm gonna use the Hollywood side for him. Absolutely. Uh, brother Sean Nelson. Yes, yes. Of course, I'm so that's Mr. that's Mr. Fresh himself, the wood. Fresh, big Mike from the wood. That's right, that's and right. DeAndre from the corner. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now I'm gonna tell you, I love the character DeAndre from the corner. Oh, okay. All day long. I was so. able to relate to the corner. So many people were able to relate to the corner in all different aspects of it, whether it was the good side, the bad side, the hustler, the fiend, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. Mm-hmm. So when you were playing that part, how much did it take for you to play that part? Like, where did you dig deep for that? How did you get into that character? Well, we actually got to meet uh, the real people when they, you know, uh, unfortunately he passed away a few years ago. But we got to meet them and kind of just talk to them about their situation and their struggle. So that kind of helped also. But, you know, it was really just kind of building the character yourself. I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to play you. Let me just watch you. Mm-hmm. You know, it was kind of like what I try to do is just put myself in that situation, you know, uh, where, OK, I'm playing this character. But as this character, what would I do? You know, okay. so that's how I, I approach it. 
Oh, okay, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so now, also in the wood, which is which is like a, I guess, a age transition film. Now, now, yeah, don't yeah, listen because yeah, yeah. you, I, get, I, I you, you get what I'm saying, right? Because you know, I'm not. Look, I'm, my people already know that I ain't all savvy with everything. I just say it how I say it. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is like one of those age transition films where you played the younger part and Omar mm-hmm. Epps played the older. The older. Were you? How did you guys? Were you? How were you able to do that? Did you spend a lot of time together, or did you just you just played the best you you, and then he just played the best you later? Yeah, like that second part. Yeah, like that that second shit. See, that's what I'm talking about. (laughs) Well, yeah, because I only met him, I believe, once before we started shooting. So we just took a day and just kind of hung out with each other, and uh, he probably just kind of watched me because we shot the younger stuff first. Okay. And then they kind of watched that and kind of played off of that and matured the characters, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, it was like, I wasn't trying to be like him. <laughs> you, you know, know what I'm saying? And, and it's so funny. I come first. I was younger. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> and what's so funny is that if you watch The Woods, you'll notice that some of the facial expressions and things mm-hmm. that you used, he actually used them in, uh. a, in the older ver- Yeah, I watched it a lot. Okay, I'm like, that. Yeah, yeah, I watched it a lot. <laughs> That's what you it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Please believe. Now, okay, so now, we have something on here called a question that is strictly mm-hmm. for the OG, right? Strictly for the OG's G's, G question of the day. Okay, now these questions can go anywhere. These questions okay. can be anything about, you know, where you grew up, mm-hmm. um, the first time you lost a fight, how did you feel, um, you know, all types of different things. But okay. the one I want to ask you, being an actor, and you know, sometimes being an actor, you have your ups and your downs, your things. Mm-hmm. Tell me, when shit is hectic, mm-hmm. what is your go to meal? When, when, when shit is hectic, I'm talking like, when you looking like, okay, I'm waiting for this check to come in, uh, we getting ready to make this move, what are we going to do? <laughs> what do you do? Do you go to do you go to White Castles? Do you do ramen noodles? Uh, do you do vegan, super vegan? Or do you, listen, or do you do the Hollywood thing and let other people take you out to eat? And you just, <laughs> you just be like, yeah, I'll go to lunch with you. Hell yeah, and I'll take that to go. Nah, nah, nah. I'm a, I'm a Popeye's guy. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken tenders and french fries. Five dollar <laughs> box. Yo, get it popping. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. See, that's and then they, now, I think now they got the surfing turf, so you can get that going. You know what I'm saying? The chicken tenders with the little fried shrimp with french fries. There you go. Do you put a lot of butter on, like, you know nah, what? I don't you, know, you, no, you don't no do butter, biscuits? Nah, nah, I do do the biscuits, but I put jelly on the biscuit. Grape jelly, not the jam. I said said jelly. (laughs) I did not say jam. (laughs) See, that's what I'm talking about. That's right, y'all. So if you're just now tuning in, you are listening to me talk to, of course, Sean Nelson. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we keep saying fresh because fresh is happy to be one of us. And it's crazy how many people still come up to me and be like, they'll see me and be like, fresh! And it's like, wait, that I was... I was 13 when I did that, but obviously they think I still look the same. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's like, yeah, that was years ago. See, and that is, that's, that's a beautiful thing, really. And and, yeah. take, and I'm going to tell you something. Take that and honor that because it mm-hmm. is, that means that God is definitely preserving you for so much more work that you have here to do. For real. Yeah. Because those who Believe age, that. really, I'm telling you, because those who age quickly, phase the fuck out quickly. Mm-hmm. Those who age, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's that's the way God does set you up. You good. Yeah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Good. You are more than good. You are great. <laughs> Because if you wasn't, you wouldn't be up on this motherfucker. Please believe that. How about that? I appreciate it. Okay, this is the R-O-X-A-N-N-E. Got Sean Nelson up here with me. Let's do it. Have have a nice day with Roxanne Shante. Featuring DJ Silk on Rock the Bell Radio. Okay, so if you are just now tuning back in with us, of course, you know I am sitting here with my hip-hop to Hollywood brother, Sean Nelson, of course, Mr. Fresh himself, and... You know what? I have a question that I want to ask you or something that I really think that maybe, you know, my crowd or my audience would love to hear, especially one parent right now who's listening and they have a child that they're putting into, I guess I want to say the world of entertainment or whether it's Mm -hmm. theater or acting or movies or whatever it is. What advice would you give to the parents regarding how to be with their children? Um, Well, I. I would say I kind of like how my mother approached it. Um, she kind of did just let me rock. And also make sure your kid really wants to be doing this. You know, like don't push them to do something that they don't want to be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just trying to please you. And I feel like I've seen a lot of that where like this kid don't want to be here. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, got to do what my parents said. You know what I'm saying? But my mother, like she let me know, like <laughs> when I didn't get the part or when I did feel like I lost she was like well there's always gonna be somebody better you know what I'm saying but that made me just think like yo all right next time 
I gotta be that person that's better. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's gotta be nobody better than me. But she just kind of made made me feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to lose. Like, it's it's a natural thing. You're not gonna always be the man. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Right. And I, it just made me. I right, I gotta work harder. That's how I felt. And I love doing it. That's the thing. Like, she saw that in me. Like I told you, I started out. I wasn't planning to be an actor. I was singing in kindergarten. You know, and I just kind of just got into this whole performing thing they put me in piano classes they put me in dance classes they put me in all these different classes and i just gravitated gravitated toward the acting you know and they just saw that i love doing it so they they supported me so that i appreciate that but you know i did get upset when i didn't get the roles you know it took a little while before things took i mean off. we all do when we especially when we think that it's something that maybe we worked hard for study for and we just thought that maybe we nailed it better than the other person indeed, you indeed. know and you're always and there's so to many away. things that come into play it might you might have been great but you just didn't have the look or you know what i'm saying you just weren't right somehow mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that you're a terrible actor you right. know what i'm saying you just got to be able to roll with the punches too like every loss ain't really a loss you know absolutely absolutely because i'm gonna tell you something i would be one of those parents like okay you didn't get the role and then later on in life the person who got the role they turned out to be fucked up in life I said now see <laughs> see what would have happened you got that you. shit you know what I'm saying that could have been you you yeah, know what I'm so saying stuff. now let's just be thankful see what I'm saying look at that you all fucked up now see what I'm saying yay we didn't get that part you know what I'm saying I always try to find like the, the good silver line yeah you have to you have to find the silver line okay so now you said you started singing when you was five I'm not gonna ask you to sing yeah, I but I just wanna, I just want to know you know how every little singer in the family because mm-hmm. like my daughter was like that little singer and we used to have her sing like every motherfucking thing what was the song that your mom always wanted you to sing like when the family came around nah, you know she want- actually didn't want me to sing when the family came around yo. it was like I used because I was singing in the church like you know so oh, okay. it, it might have been a, a church song if, if they wanted me to sing that but you know I guess um, I used to always have to sing this song because I was a part of this little acting group and they had me singing the um the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. And that's... I had my little solo part that I was singing. I think it was like the second verse. Oh, that is so nice, because I'd have had yeah. you, you'd have been like the five-year-old Marvin Gaye in my motherfucking house. <laughs> I'd have blew your ass in the living room like, come on, baby, sing that shit but for me. It's funny, me and my brothers and sisters, there's a lot, there's a, quite a few of us, but we would sometimes, you know, I guess a lot of kids did this, would perform songs or whatever and do a little dance to it, choreograph. My sisters had me doing that, you know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. So we was all kind of performing, but it, I was the only one that kind of was like, all right, this is what I want to do for real, for real. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I got you, I got you. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming up. Listen, anything that we could support you on, anything that you are doing, you definitely let us know. Hit us mm-hmm. up with all your social media. Let, let everybody definitely. get up on there and, and well, get the follow. Well, no, I don't have Twitter, but I do have Instagram. It's just Sean Nelson, S-E-A-N-N-E-L-S-O-N. And, I mean, I'm still on Facebook with the same name, Sean Nelson, but I don't really... I, I got the page. I don't really check in that much. I'll try to check in often. But, um, yeah, you know, maybe I'll get a Twitter in the future. Okay, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, please believe it. Well, we getting ready to get into some Rock'em Sock'em Robots up here. This is Roxanne Shante. My DJ's name is Silk. And we want you to have what? A nice day. Let's do it. Dope.